Thank you very much, Superintendent Elo. Um, let me just say it's a, it's a pleasure and an honor to be with all of you uh, tonight. It's really my honor to share this stage with you, not the other way around. Um, let me also congratulate you on being named a leader for social justice um, in the community by the NAACP this year. Uh, your work and, and the work of all of your colleagues enrich our community, they make it safer, they make Cambridge the special place uh, that it really is. We are all indebted to you. Thank you for your good efforts. It's also a special honor just to be here tonight and to look out and see so many old friends from different parts of my life. I feel this is a little bit like this is your life, um, you know, coming, uh, coming here. Um, I was a little bit nostalgic and reflecting upon this because I realized that this fall, it will mark exactly 50 years ago since I arrived in Cambridge as a freshman um, at MIT uh, from Pontiac, Michigan. Now, I came, I was a prodigy. I was six years old at the time. Um, <laughs> time flies when you're, uh, when you're having fun. Um, and Superintendent Elo, you will, you will appreciate the following story. Um, I recall, you know, I, I wanted, this is almost embarrassing for the president of Harvard to admit, um, but I wanted to go to MIT since the time I was about this big. I, I was a math science geek, you know, and I thought this is where math science geeks belonged. Um, and I never actually saw MIT until I arrived as a freshman. In fact, I never met anybody who went to MIT until I went for my interview in Detroit and I met this old guy who was an alumnus of MIT who interviewed me. He was probably all of 40 uh, at, <laughs> at, at the time. Uh, but I remember showing up um, at the place and um, with, my, with my parents. And remember, this is 1969, so there was a big protest going on in front of MIT. And in fact, the MIT police were out in full force. And my father looked at me and he said, I need to tell you one thing. If you get arrested, don't call home. <laughs> um, so uh, here I am 50 years later. I actually have not gotten more than two stops on the red line from where we are today in 50 years. Uh, my career has been an oscillating function on the red line. Uh, I started as an undergraduate at MIT. I came to Harvard for graduate school. I went back to MIT to join the faculty. You know, I then, when I left after 24 years, I left MIT, I went to Tufts. And now I'm back at, now I'm back at Harvard. You know, my Tufts friends are here. Hi, guys. Um, and this is a place which, as both Gita and, and Superintendent Elo said, th that, that welcomes people literally from all over the world. It's a place where people come and, like me, they figure out who they are when they're here. That's what our students do uh, from all of the great universities that are here. Um, they figure out who they are personally, who they are politically, who they are culturally, who they are socially, um, I said just yesterday in Memorial Church uh, with my friend Jonathan Walton, who they are spiritually. And it is these great institutions who help these students uh, figure out who they are. Along the way, I learned that I cared about cities, uh, and I married somebody who did as well. My wife, Adele, um, is a city planner. I spent 24 years. I spent 24 years on the faculty in the Department of Urban Studies and Planning uh, at, at MIT. And uh, in the process, I think um, I learned a lot about what creates an interesting, vibrant, thriving city. And all you have to do is look around Cambridge and you will find that. Um, if I've learned anything in those 50 years about town-gown relations, it's that Let's face it, most host cities have love-hate relationships with the universities that they happen to host, right? On the one hand, they're, you know, we all love the culture that great universities bring. 
Um, we love the visitors that they often bring and the resources. Um, we love the, the fact that they tend to renew our communities on a regular basis. You know, as you said, every fall a new crop of students come and every June another group, um, another group leaves. But one of my goals as president of Harvard is to make sure that this balance leans more towards the love side um, than the hate. <laughs> because universities also bring noisy students, you know, uh, who can be rowdy uh, at times. They bring traffic, they bring congestion, they bring all sorts of other things. And I think part of the challenge for those of us who lead these institutions, part of the challenge for those of us who care so much about a city like this is to try and, and work together as good neighbors to always try and find the right balance. We don't always get it right, okay? We're not perfect, but we should also always work and strive uh, to make things better. Um, Gita, in her introductory remarks, said that she was dreaming, not dreaming, but about the idea, if I got it correctly, Gita, of a, um, a young man or woman, a student, graduate of Cambridge, Ringe and Latin, you know, first generation in their, in their family who would go on to a place like Harvard or MIT. Those students exist. Um, in fact, one of them works as an intern in my office, um, a graduate of Cambridge, Ringe and Latin, first generation from his family to go to college, um, who is now at Harvard. Um, and who has spent time, you know, working abroad, doing good work again on behalf of those who are who are most um, uh, in need. And I think that's also what we try to do um, at institutions like Harvard, like MIT, like Leslie, like Cambridge College. We all exist to try and and help our students figure out how they can make a difference in the world. Um, with education comes responsibility, and it's the responsibility, I think, to make the world a better place. I've often said I've yet to meet anybody who thinks the world that we live in is perfect. This is not a political statement. Equally true of Democrats and Republicans, <laughs> liberals and conservatives. Never met anybody who thought the world that we live in is perfect. If you don't believe it is perfect, the only way it gets better is if good people work to repair it. That is our collective responsibility, I think, and it's a special responsibility for those of us in higher education. One measure of the justness of a society is how it treats the least fortunate, the most vulnerable, among us. Um, when I look out tonight, I see many, many people who are committed to trying and doing more for those less fortunate. That's why you are all here. It's why I am here with you. We all have a responsibility uh, to make the world a better place. When I welcomed a freshman at Harvard for the first time this year, I made a point of saying to them that Harvard did not build itself. It existed, it exists, and they had the opportunity for this extraordinary education because generations who came before them believed in the idea of Harvard. Cambridge did not build itself. Cambridge exists because people who came before all of us believed in the city that we see here today, okay? Leaders from all walks of life, um, from the business community, civic leaders, nonprofit leaders, educational leaders, all have worked to create the city which we call home today. They all worked to create opportunity for each and every one of us that we enjoy today. And just as they work to create this, it is now our responsibility to carry on that tradition. Reggie was incredibly articulate in his welcoming poem that greeted us all in speaking about 
the importance of welcoming the immigrant uh, to our country. I feel fortunate, like many of you, to have lived the American dream. My parents were both immigrants to this country. They were actually both refugees. My mother came here on the second Liberty ship that brought refugees from Europe after World War II. She was an orphan. She had lost her entire family. She was a survivor of Auschwitz, the only Jew from her town, actually, who survived World War II. Where else in the world can one come literally off the boat with nothing and in one generation to grow up to, to be the president of Harvard? This is the American dream that I've been fortunate to live. It's, it's an American dream that each and every one of us needs to work to ensure that future generations have that opportunity just as we did. These are difficult times in this country. This country is deeply divided. We are eroding the social capital that allows our institutions, our society, to work and function daily. This foundation, the Cambridge Community Foundation, is creating social capital. This is why your work is so important. This is why I want to say thank you for all that each of you are doing to support this organization, to support our city. And I guarantee you that Harvard will be a good partner with each and every one of you in these efforts. Thank you to each and every one of you for what you do for Cambridge. <laughs>